On a sunny Wednesday evening in Seattle, Washington, three artists reunited with one of their former college professors. This was supposed to be an interview, but ultimately became a discussion on the history and function of art and design in our world. Sit down, and if possible, grab the beverage of your choice. This is Art 101 Revisited. The other is based on, on, on fact, on statistics. And the third way we use of understanding our world is art. And that's direct observation and response. I'm here, I see this thing, I record it. And then I imagine another here, and I see that thing and I record it. Right, which is, which is also science. Which is also <laughs> science. Well, they run into each other. Yeah, you see, and, and, and if you like, established religion has always used artists because it's the best way to express the inexpressible, you know? You see, you're talking about... Conveyance. Yeah. Conveyance trumps everything. Yeah. yeah. Games are boring with art the same way religion would be boring without visual yeah. images. And Absolutely. Poetry. Absolutely. It's, it's, the same, it's the same rational. Everyone has a cool idea. Yeah. But to convey that idea, to, yeah. to be able to express it and have the general populace understand that... Everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. Yes. Yeah, and, and you know, our friends who do the sound, you know, the, the, the audio engineers, they're, 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 they're doing the same thing. They're right in there adding music and sound effect and, and building what is essentially a, 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 um, a sensual response. See, that's the thing about art. It's the thing about making art, and it's one of the reasons that I really don't care for computers, because making art is sensual. Receiving art is sensual. It is literally one or two or three of your five senses. Digital you know, art is a product of commercialism, really. It's a commercial enterprise. Yeah, but, it's, a, you know, it's a faster way to get an idea onto a print table. Yeah, yeah. oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But, but, you know, the fact of the matter is everybody has used art, and everybody has used artists. And if you're going to survive by making art, you have to accept the fact that people will come to you and say, I want pictures for my book, I want pictures for my game, I want pictures for my cathedral, I want a cathedral, you know, I, I, I want a, 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 an operating system so that I can make games in there, you know, because there are times that engineers turn into artists, you know, uh, you know, it's all there and the mathematicians turn into artists because they're finding how to do all this stuff. But the art is just, is, and is one of the ways in which we survive. I think it's one of the things that gives meaning to our lives. Not necessarily, oh, go into a museum and look at the art and, and you will be elevated. No, that could happen, right? It's a much more basic experience. It's a much more basic yeah. experience. It's, it's, you know, uh, <clears throat> why do we drink beer? Well, yeah, it gets us drunk, but because it tastes good. <laughs> and because the whole situation, you know, it's the form, stupid. You know, it's not the alcohol. You want know, alcohol? Go get yourself a bottle of hooch and you know, knock yourself out. If your goal is to become sick and unconscious, it's easy to do. But that's not why we do this. You know, if I just if I want if I just want to get sick and unconscious, I just chug up all rub a bottle of rubitussin and blister. Or even better, stick your finger down your throat and hit yourself in the head. Costs nothing. Yeah, that's basic right there. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's where my pappy did it. <laughs> That's what we did for fun. <laughs> the interrelatedness of art in our lives is, is an interesting topic from a game development side because what I found with in working with uh, level designers mm -hmm. that have to create the basic, the fundamental structures mm -hmm. of the space that you 
move around in. So when they run into difficulty, it's generally, and we have very talented level designers, so I don't want to speak ill of them, but when they run into difficulty, it's not because they're hitting the ceiling of their design skill, they're actually experiencing the ceiling of their artistic skill. Yeah. They, they actually need to immerse themselves in the process of observation, recreation, and imagination in an artistic way rather than just uh -huh. in a game space. Uh -huh. so right. Or them. like in a spatial way, you know, like yeah. what is the most efficient design the portion, for this level? Yeah, yeah right. Because all of those things work together, yeah, right? Exactly. They all, nothing ever separates out. Yeah. You know, uh, you will remember. I don't want them to get too good because then they wouldn't need me. To <laughs> no, 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 no. No, they will still. They will still. Need they, will still <laughs> they will always need you. And here's the thing. Uh, I'm so, so I have two students right now. One of them is a high school student who wants to get into DigiPen of all things. And I'm going to make sure that no matter how bad the courses might be there, she will be well equipped to be an artist. Yeah. And she is going to go in there with a portfolio that will knock their socks off because she's actually really good. This, this girl has the potential of being an extraordinarily good artist. I'm not, I'm not joking. I, I look at this and say, you make me go look good every time you put charcoal on a piece of paper. It's such a joy to find young. Oh, yeah. yeah. The other one, the other one is a professional graphic designer. But she's hit that ceiling. She realizes that if she got a degree in another local community college, right, and she's really good at Photoshop, and she's really good at Illustrator, but she can't draw. And she knows the fact that she can't draw stops her from advancing. Because, just as you said, because that skill of looking at the world, observing the world, and what's more, seeing how the process of seeing, understanding how the process of understanding, indeed learning the process of learning, how that works is, is one thing that I honestly think art teaches and art education teaches that nothing else we do teaches. This is why I think, you know, in, in secondary education saying, okay, we'll quit, we'll, we'll scrap art because art depends on the student's talent so you can't be taught, which as you know is rubbish. Yes. <laughs> That's Alan Ferry. <laughs> Isn't that, Nelson. don't we just know that that is rubbish? <laughs> um, and, 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 you know, we, so we'll scrap that because it's not necessary. No, I, I think, you know, <laughs> I will go so far as to say there are so many social problems we have right now because there aren't enough people who understand the way the lessons that art teaches. Yeah. I mean, that art teaches no, it's not about this glass and that glass and that glass. But the space in and around and between these glasses, it's the relationship, it's the gestalt, it's the gestalt, it's the relationship. It's and as not I've said, if you want to be <laughs> if you want to be if, if you're shooting if you're shooting the scene. Yeah, right. It's not that this beer is dark and that one is light, but that this one is darker than that one by how much of a percentage. You know. And it's like and what's the lighting conditions like? Yeah, yeah, and what yeah. color, color is like why does it look darker? Choices. It might not necessarily <laughs> sorry, be darker. Sorry, Jonathan, I missed it. Yeah. No, it's just your color choices are suddenly dictated by what you want to say. It's like something might look black mm -hmm. on the painting or on the canvas or on the screen or whatever but in reality the color itself like the raw color you're using could be something completely completely removed from black yeah. it's just darker than everything the else it's right. just everything else so yeah one, one of the things i've been trying to yeah that exactly yeah one of the things I've been trying to reincorporate into the study of spatial relationships and not focusing on individual objects, but focusing on the space, that's something that I learned at Pigeon but now I'm trying to um, still look at that information, but all the while remembering that people who look at the piece, will their eyes will still jump from subject to subject, yeah. and keeping that in mind, keeping the, uh, the experience of viewing the work in Mind mm -hmm. while constructing it simultaneously can be a can be a bit of a balance, but oh, yeah. definitely an advantage when you when you learn when you learn it or when you yeah, that, is, that is the nature. I mean, that is the perpetual problem, the repeating problems of composition.
question. You know, right, you have to go and, back and forth. You have to go back and forth, and it's always the question of not just what do I want them to see, but what do I want them to see in what order? Where do I want them to linger? And how Where do the I want? Energy between them and that's so, and that's form. That's yeah. form. Yeah. And that is what makes the difference. And and it's always it's always. See, back to those back to those three ways of looking at the universe. Science is always about the statistics of the thing, right? It's this. This is not that, right? This is not that. These are different, right? If you like, if you get the right religion, like Buddhism, this is that. <laughs> they are the same unity, and you are them too. You know, and 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 and, and, and what's more, there's there's, there's, there's a sort of uh, holiness of existence thing, which, as far as I'm concerned, is central to all religion. And art simply says. Oh yeah, they're the same in this respect, and they're different in that respect, and they're near in that respect, and they're far in that respect. Just consider a tiny little example about the relationship thing that you learn from being an artist. Perceptual thresholds. Okay, I've got, I've got a value chart between white and black. And I got 0% down here, that's black. And I got 100% up here, that's white. And I got it chopped into 10 pieces, so they're 10% intervals, okay? Right, okay, that's mathematics, that's science. But the fact of the matter, we know that if you take 50 and you take 30 and you put them together, that's a 20% difference. If you take 30 and you put it next to 10, that's a 20% difference, and the differences ain't the same. Because perceptually, they're not equal. I'm, I'm, I, yeah, they're not. They're I, not. It's, if, you, if you view them both in a lit room, it's very likely that your darker values will seem closer together. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Which is really strange. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm fascinated by the three pillars that you just introduced, which is um, science, uh, church or religion, science, religion, and art. Yeah. And like, it, it got me thinking, like, well, religion will tell you that they have faith that something is definite. Mm -hmm. Science will give you a bunch of reasons that something is not what it is, and they can never tell you definitely what something is. But they can get really close they'll, to they'll, it. They'll yeah. give you probability that something is actually what it is. Mm -hmm. Art makes you feel that something is correct. Or, or is is telling you that something is what it is because it's conveyed properly or I, I, I lost my train of thought. My I, I also think that a lot of times uh, with science and sometimes with religion, it depends on what religion. Buddhism is a little different, but they're about the process of trying to understand the external world. Yeah. And then the art is very much about communicating. Art will say that their version is correct. Yes, uh, their version is yeah, yeah. That's what I was and there's about. and there's also <laughs> there, there's also this. There's also this. I like that idea, John. There's also religion. Believe that this is true. Science. I have proved that this is true. Art. I'll show you that it's true. <laughs> and, 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 you know, we relate to the world in different ways. You know? Um, and, and, and again, I think that the the certainty of the unsubstantiated belief can be very creative, you know, can be very important. It can be the way to show you a guide to live your whole life, that's fine. The certainty of the accurate measurement can be very important. It, it, our, our whole and improve life as it exists. Improve right? life yeah, yeah. as it exists. But the uncertainty of art is always where the dynamic of change comes from. You know, it's the one that says, "Yeah, it's like this, but it could be better." Yeah, it could yeah. be like this. It could be like the world to be that. I yeah. just, I just thought of Star Trek because it's a combination of like a lot of artistic disciplines mm -hmm. and then science. So yeah. the same as like, imagine what life could be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. yeah. could have replicators. Or, or if you like, Star Trek or if you like um, the Ghost in the Shell, the Ghost, the ghost in the, the Shell. shell is oh there. my God! As <laughs> soon as an idea occurs to us. We have to start making it. It's damned near impossible, extinctive. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the line that always knocked me out about that, yeah. that film. 
as soon as an idea occurs, we've got to start making it, it's damned near instinctive. And I think it is instinctive to us, you know. And where do the ideas come from? Yeah. <laughs> Usually, I'm not gonna brag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would make the argument that no one has ever had an original idea. Uh, well, that's true that. because it's not the content; it's the form. What makes it original is how you express it. Original ideas are uh, us smashing together previous concepts that we've come in contact with. It's true, it's true for <laughs> very high values of the word original. Yeah. Like for for, uh, for norm, normative values of original, they happen all the time. It depends on your how, mm -hmm. how pure the originality has to be. I think there's a lot of originality around us, but. Um, uh, less and less all the time. That's the, that's the positive Brand, side of discovery. Grant, if I can remind you what I mentioned before about the mother and child painting. Right. None of them are original. If all, you're, are look, also, if, if, if all you're looking at is the subject matter, none of them is original. Yeah. All of them are original if you're looking at the form. Right. Some of them are less original because they're derivative form, but that doesn't stop their originality. I think I could meet you halfway and say that um, whether originality exists or not, perhaps it's not important. Like, perhaps it's not wholly important to be completely original, it shouldn't be the focus. Because um, I would say that too much, a lot of times, uh, too, too much focus is put on originality, originality especially in, the, in fine arts, not so much in game art. They might be, a, maybe there could be a meeting of the minds no, of the two. No, no. <laughs> There's always going to be more dwarves to draw. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you could also... Night elves with breasts and swords, yeah. I think, is the big thing. In a, in a way that approaches more of a general populist way of thinking about this. Um, there's the hero's journey, mm -hmm. which yeah. is the basis for almost every single modern movie that gets made, like action flick, adventure. Oh uh, yeah, and, just variations on the theme of the hero's journey. Yeah, you have the hero, and they don't. They have this idea, and they're great for who they are, but they weren't that great. And then yeah. there's usually a mentor that comes along and says, "Your destiny." Yes, and and, and then re refusing the call to act and all yeah, that exactly. stuff. It's all there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Every hero, it's like they want it so bad, but then there's a part of the movie where they have to say no. Yeah. And it doesn't fit the character at all, but they still do they it. They do that because no. it's part of the it's part I'm of the I'm an mythos. archetype. Conflict yeah. is drama. The conflict is drama. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and there is... See, there, there's also one thing that art does, uh, particularly visual art, that and I think is kind of cool, that, that the science is perhaps not interested in this respect, but the fact that we've... Re we understand our existence in terms of narrative. That's why the hero with a thousand names is there. Because it's the way in which we make sense of our existence. We understand it in terms of narrative. Now the fact of the matter is existence is chaos. There is no plot line. You're not the hero. I am. You're just a bit part in my story. Oh wait, I forgot. I'm the wise old man who's supposed to give you advice. I'm the bit part in your store. Right? You know, and all of that stuff is... Soon I'm going to go fight the dragon in the mountain yeah, or you've steal got, a goblet from it or something. Yeah, whatever it is, right? You know? Death Star. <laughs> right. And one of the things, one of the things that, that art will do, visual art especially, is it will reduce the concept of narrative to the absolute banal and still be phenomenal. Once upon a time, there was a brave warrior. No, none of that crap. Once upon a time, there was a bowl of fruit. But do it right, and there's a world to be seen in that bowl of fruit. There is there's understanding to be gained from that. I mean, long the, enough to look at it. The apples and grapes got along well. Then yeah. the banana. Then, yeah. <laughs> and all was in darkness. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And that avocado, what's that about? The memory of the banana is spotty. <laughs> Yeah, one of the things yeah. that I was, um, that I remembered as you were talking about the perception uh, values, actually, mm -hmm. to rewind a bit, um, there was a moment that, I've, you know, I've always really struggled with, with color. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've struggled with all of, it, all of it, but I felt like color was a special mystery to me. And especially when people would say that shadows were cooler or colder, mm -hmm. it was hard to grasp that concept. Right, like, do I just add blue? Yeah, <laughs> and when I did, oftentimes it would end up like maybe I was closer, maybe I was further from the shoe color. 
similar. It, there didn't seem to be any semblance of, of, of reason to it. But uh, once I was on my way to dinner then, and it was one of those crazy Seattle mornings where you can't decide whether it's going to rain or the sun is going to shine. And I remember the, the car had been covered in rain and the sun came out. And I remember sitting in the car with all the rain on the windows and the sunlight was shining through the water and the interior of the car was this combination of colors that was a cast from the rainwater on the outside and it felt like the outside was warmer and I remember that that moment kind of imprinted on me and I sort of knew intuitively that was the first time I knew what a cold color could feel like right and you may have experienced that sort of thing before but this was the first time you were really observing the, and was, thinking about it. I was uh, it. open to the experience. I, I, yeah. was, uh, I was ready for it or something. I don't know, yeah. but but it uh, it was it, 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 it was one of those times where I experienced a level up in my understanding of art that's without okay. doing yeah. artwork at the time. Yeah, I know, but that's yeah. that's right because yeah. that's where the cognitive knowledge is sitting there waiting for the experience to turn experience. it into effective learning. Yeah, ah, okay. yeah. You, you knew that this thing existed, and then oh. Well, in my... That's what they've been talking about. My cognitive, I don't know if this is a normal experience for other people, but my cognitive experience always comes first. And that, that part I advance and I focus on due to my, probably my nature, my personality, mm -hmm. and then the other things kind of trail along behind and I'm just waiting for sort of an, ex, an emotive experience to mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. cement it. And, and it's, it's hard when you're thirsty for those experiences and they're not coming because yeah, yeah. it's the hardest thing to know how to start. <laughs> the answer is, the answer is, of course, my son, draw more. <laughs> Get out that sketchbook. I was Where's going to, but then I had to come here and, talk, and yeah. do this. So. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very bad at, at following what I, practicing what I preach today. I, I'm not, not doing much drawing recently. Um, I've always, I've always been told, never trust a psychiatrist who takes their own advice, <laughs> or their own medicine, or their own For medicine. Sure. Yeah, yeah. There's, right. there's something it's becoming more and more applicable. <laughs> there's something in that. There's something in that. Also, the realization that hit me uh, after I left Disney. The fact of the matter is, I'm a pretty fair artist, but I'm a damn good teacher. And there comes a time when you have to accept the fact that, you know, what you're doing is what you're good at, and that's what you ought to focus on. And, I mean, you know, I'm an artist the way that a priest is a Christian. <laughs> it kind of he's goes. much better at teaching. Than yeah, he but he's a whole lot better sometimes at the thing. And, and, and I'm an artist as a teacher because that's what I teach. And because I really think the stuff that we do, you know, I remember... I hate to say that I remember being considerably younger than you <laughs> and thinking this this field I'm engaged in this thing that somehow just creates my life is either the absolute icing on the cake and the least necessary human activity there is or the reason that the rest of this world exists it's one or the other it's the most important activity we have or entirely frivolous. Well, the fact of the matter is probably it can be both. But I really think, you know, when I say about, you know, how do we survive? I think making art is one of the ways in which we do survive. Whether it's, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I made this point in Art 101, and I'd say, look around the room. Take away everything that did not start with a drawing on a piece of paper, and you've got 18 naked people, one story off the ground, and that plant. <laughs> you know? and, and that's the truth. Everything, everything that our society builds begins with a scientist and an artist. That's amazing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to my religious friends, but the fact of the matter is everything we, 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 that we have, that is generated, this society has begun with scientists who give us the technology and artists who give us the idea. You know, you know. You have vision and function. Yeah, you have vision and function. where they function. meet, you have invention. Oh, that exactly. Oh, that's that's lovely. I like that. I like it. And then, then we have to go back because, you know, that's why you're here and why you're asking. You have to come back to BJ's uh, a creation molecule. Form, function, medium. Right? There has to be a form. 
because you can't have formless things. Yeah, that's just a thought. A function. What's it for? Sometimes it's just direct decoration. Sometimes it's just to cover up the nasty stain on the wall. You know? And then there's a medium. It's got to be made out of something. And whether you think about form first, in which case you're a designer, I mean you're an artist, or function, in which case you're a designer, or medium, in which case you're a craftsman, you have to be a master of all of these things, because all good art, all good craft, all good design is a balance of form, function, and medium. Now, it has to be said that we turn to our scientists, we turn to our engineers and say, please give me the wherewithal to make the things I want. I want to be able to create an imaginary 3D environment that people can pretend to walk through. Okay, we got to have our, our programmers, we got to have our electrical engineers, we got to have very complicated stuff. We got to have somebody who's going to come up with a program that's going to allow us to make 3D models to stick into this world. You know, we can't do it without them. So one of the things but, that I, I thought, oh sorry. Yeah, but we will do these things, and if they're successful, it's because they're a balance of form, function, and medium. So interestingly, as the industry, the game industry, gets more and more specialized with people doing specifically effects, specifically concepts, specifically uh, any number of things, design, mm -hmm. uh, level design, um, they still have to know those three things. Yeah. Although their technical knowledge is very specific, they still have to understand. Uh, they have to be a craftsman. They have to be able to put it in the game, right, and make sure it works technically. Uh, they have to understand the form of it, and they have to understand the function. Yeah. Oh, do I need to lean in? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, I mean, uh, dude, it's, my it's, wife is a technical writer. What she does is based on the same three principles. It's the same three. Principles. It's got to be those things. I was just thinking about how. When I do a concept, I have to keep in mind how the game works. Mm -hmm. I have to know mm -hmm. the game design. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't, I can add something or take something away that is vital. Yeah. Um, I can also improve the game design by putting something here instead of there. Yeah. Um, I have to also know the technical restrictions of the game because I need to know whether something is going to be expensive to put in with the, the amount of geometry and vertices and the more of the effects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then when I think of someone who's very different from me, like on the effects side, they're making smoke and explosions. They still have to know that stuff. Mm -hmm. They have to know if the smoke is going to be distracting to the player. They have to know about performance because they need to know how many particles it's going to be in. And they also have to know about visuals and aesthetics too. And we're so very specialized, but we're, I mean, as an instructor, I have to, I worry a little bit about sending the wrong message to students telling them to specialize because their skill set still has to be very broad. It has to include all of that, but their technical knowledge has to include it. That, that goes right back to the idea of TSDA, Theory, Strategy, Tactics, Application. Right. Okay. The theory, the artistic theory is universal. You know, and it doesn't matter if you're a potter or an illustrator or a game designer. The theory, the theoretical knowledge, the, the sum total of everything you know about this subject is still there. Strategy is about, okay, what part of my knowledge fits here? But the fact is that you still got to have the totality of the knowledge. If you're going to be a particles effect guy, you still got to know the other things to be able to take a tactical approach of when do I do this, where do I do this, how do I do this, and then make it happen. A great example is uh, if you're creating an explosion, you have to know, you have to break apart a building, you have to know the geometry of that building, which you didn't make. But you still have to be intimately familiar with that building geometry. And, 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 and that, that, that fundamental understanding of what is the particular job I've got to do. Did, did any of you take the box class? I did. Did you yeah. design? Yeah. I, I did not. Yeah. Did you, Adam? I, but I TA'd for you. So. Yeah, yeah, you TA'd for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I took the box class. Like I said, those last three years, I kind of a blur. One of, the, one of the things that happened over time in the box class is, first of all, it was supposed to be an exercise in 3D design. You know, just so they had some people that had 3D experience, physical 3D right. because it's a, it helps you think three-dimensionally if you have physical things to touch and maneuver. But over time, because there was no class that did this, it turned into an examination of design process. And it became much more about thinking through the process of writing the design document for artists because you know the programmers did that stuff, the design students did that stuff, but none of the artists were getting that, that exercise, that, that discipline, 
of saying, okay, what are the problems they got to solve? You know, what you're talking about, it's still part of the artistic process. It's still art. But you go in there and say, okay, what's the goal? WTF? Uh, what's the assignment I've been given? How's it been dealt with? What's the who, what, where, when, why, and how of this problem? Who's going to play the game? What's going on in it? Who are the characters in the game? How does it happen? Where does this fit in the sequence of the game? All of the about like the console all and the of that experience, stuff. the user experience. That's all just design process. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is whether you're doing an illustration for a kid's book or designing an environment or the smoke effects for that environment, it's actually the same process. I, <laughs> believe it or not, I told my kids when they were in primary school, because I'm that kind of a nut, all problems are design problems. All problems are design problems. You're not going to understand that right now, but no. <laughs> oh, no. in your head. They latched on to They this probably really will because they've heard other analogies in the past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they latched on to it very quickly, which is, oh, yeah. The way in which you sort out how to make a picture, the way that you sort out how to make the smoke effect is essentially the same process that you use, how am I going to get home tonight? Well, and also you I just don't think of it in those terms. I will say, we talked about this earlier, too, that you have this, you, you, you hear a piece of information, and then later on you realize the importance of that information. I also want to say that, like, there isn't one moment of revelation. It's like a series of revelations that go on throughout your life. So you may hear something and be like, oh, that's what he meant. But then two years later, you're going to be like, oh, that's what he meant. It's like, it's going to get and then they don't say, oh, that. <laughs> yeah. well, you also need those experiences to kind of reinforce. Yeah. Right? Yeah. These you concepts. do. And typically, if they're if they're decent concepts, they will. And I think d design is a good format to view. Like it's a good lens to view the rest of reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty yeah. solid. Yeah, yeah. And like designing your even you can design your career. Yeah. Like what is my career for? Yeah. Right. It, it, you know, yeah. It Do I, do, is my career to make me the greatest amount of money possible? Is yeah. it to get me the most girls? Is it to get me <laughs> well, a decent yeah. life? Is it to get me retired to Hawaii by forty? Yeah. You know, yeah. What's it I mean, for? Where, where do I want to live? Yeah. It's one of the things that I bring up to students all the time that usually they haven't thought about in their first two or three years. It's like, I just want to do art so bad. I know. Well, I mean, you, like, can, you can break it down to the smallest. Those are very few and far. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can break it down to the smallest possible concept, which is, I want to have dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dinner is a design problem. Uh, it is. Um, it is, absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's a design problem. You, you, you yeah. want to have dinner tonight. Okay. How are you going to solve this problem? You could have someone else design it for you. <laughs> yeah. Or you go out and get somebody else to do it for you. Or you could, go to the, you could come up with your own personal design. You could go to the grocery store and pick out a fish or a steak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you could design the rest of your meal around that piece of protein. Or do you really yeah. want to watch Game of Thrones? So you choose finger food. Because yeah. you know it's going to be the easiest to clean up. And you don't have to have silverware on the yeah, yeah, exactly. Very it's simple a, design. Yeah. It What's is. This is what I did last What's night. What's it for? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and this, you know, John, you, you have hit the nail on the head. That is a design problem. Design process will solve that problem. And you start with the designer's question. WTF. <laughs> because, and, and it's also, I mean, here's the thing that's nice about that. I really like that analogy, John. Because it ties all of the things in, along with, you know, uh, there's also a certain amount of satisfaction of the sentences. I, I want it to taste good. Yeah. But I got to be able, it's got to be finger food. Okay? <laughs> yeah. I got to be able to eat the, off the plate while my mind is Taste fixed good on this the plate. artist, and mm -hmm. it's got to be finger food as the CEO. Yeah, you yeah. have both things. You got to have all of these things. You know? yeah, it's got these things together. And, and the process of, of, of beginning there is say, okay, what's my options? Where do I get the material yeah. from? And, and believe it or not, you're talking about finger food. You're talking about functionality. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll use this fish. You're talking content. Right? Content, functionality, uh, usability, you know, usability, all of these things are in there. What's the interface? Oh. <laughs> and, and what you said before about, about, you know, it's the same process over and over again and, and relearning the same thing. As we like to say, that's why humanity has a flat forehead. Oh! <laughs> you know, it's the duh moment where, where, where you said, I know that. And Becker it's, is it's, hitting himself on the forehead now, yeah. for those that are and, it's, and it's, it's, it's the same, you know, and, and that actually ties in, strangely enough, to what you're talking about, John, in that you solve this problem a thousand times. So you begin to get a kind of uh, uh, 
stable of answers. You know, I got all of these answers that I can do the obvious one. It's a toolbox. Know. It's a toolbox. Yeah, good. You got a toolbox of answers. And you say, okay, we'll have the fish fingers tonight because it's Game of Thrones and I want faith, you know, whatever it is. And, and indeed, there's an awful lot of day to day jobbing artists that consist of building up this toolbox based on your experiences, Adam, as you said, you know, and the, and the technology you've got to use of these things that work. And that's fine and that's good and, and, and that's in fact how it works and it's how it works most of the time. You know, I mean, obviously because I'm an art teacher and because I want my fellow artists to grow and to get them more out of it. Every now and then, it's good to stop for a minute and say, hey, I got an extra half an hour. I should go shopping. I won't get takeaway to fetch home and eat in front of the television. I, I, I'm going to make it myself tonight. And you go out there and you don't have a plan in mind. And you go out and you look. That's the sketchy thing, right? You go out there and look and say, you know, I've never tried rockfish. I wonder what the heck that's like. Or, you know, what the, yeah, what the, what the heck is this vegetable? Huh, what do you, what do, you also, do with this? You also thing? have to trust a little bit. You have to trust. You have to trust yourself bit. when you sketch. Yeah. Trust the grocery store that what yeah. you're buying won't kill you. you, kill you. <laughs> like yeah, it's, you know. There's a little bit of that. I've never eaten this before, but it's probably fine. A lot of people I eat it. I want to get my life in your hands, Trader Joe's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but as you say, and, and, and also, you know, that, that, that trusting with the drawing and so forth, that's built up with the experience. The more you do it, the better it works out, the more the more likely it is to be okay. Uh, and I really like that, that, you know, cooking dinner is a design problem. You know, working out where the smoke goes and when is a design problem, you know. So all problems are design problems if you recognize that that's what we do. You know, there's this wonderful bit that I like to, I, I like to quote back at Christians, right? To say, okay, in the Bible it says, man was created in God's image. And what is God? The creator. So Therefore, you are a creator. <laughs> Go and friggin' well create. Yeah. Because that is your natural action. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I have Man, had Mormons many... Mormons might be onto something. <laughs> I, 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 I've, had, I've had many weird... I've had no, many weird <laughs> jobs in my life, include, <laughs> including working in factories and all like that. Um, and one of the things that I discovered is that... Almost in any repetitious job, any kind of factory job, any opportunity to build in the possibility of the guy that's working the machine making a choice, making a decision, doing something, making something, increased the, 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 the viability of the job, increased the pleasure of the job, increased the, the life of the guy doing it. Anytime he had a chance to have an input and be creative, it was better. There's studies to back that up now. Yeah, I, they, they, right. They've been, they've been. I have no doubt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because Japan science. was doing that's it for a long time. That's the science catching up with the Ex damned exactly, artist again. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and and any time that you have that up that possibility, I think it's just it's just human nature. It's human nature. Yeah. We've built our. You know, look around here. We built this environment because it's our nature to build the environment. You know, yeah. sometimes we screw up. Sometimes we're not paying attention. You know, and and the other thing that happens is okay. So we built this environment. And we've also built the environment where the people who say sub the environment, the goal is to make as much money out of this as possible. Yeah. That's not creative. No. You know, that's that's hoarding. It's not creative. Yeah. <laughs> right? Bringing this back to the idea of games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Minecraft is such a goddamn popular game. Yes, it's, it's the, the most popular game. game in the last like 10 years. It is the most popular game ever yeah. for amount of money that it's made. Selling the titles, like at $20 a pop, it is sell, sold more than any other game yeah, in the I history mean, of games. And, and you know, you, you and, absolutely and nailed it, Adam. It's still You're yeah, spot on. Years old. You're spot on. <laughs> yeah, you know. it's kind of, yeah. It's a yeah. game that where you, it's not about killing. Yeah, and like ninety nine point nine percent of games are, are about yeah, yeah. killing, and the top selling one yeah, isn't yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, it's you know, wild. Yeah, well, it's interesting that that sort of Five thank you that last bit. You know, the the, the games about killing it's sort of 
um, that goes to the reptilian brain. I mean, you know, uh, our species has evolved and developed over time and survived because of our ability to go out with a rock on the end of a stick and kill a mammal. Yeah, and I yeah. think there's also a, a practicality side to it too, where games uh, evolve to keep score and it's easy to keep score when you've got guns yeah. pointed at each other. It's very easy to send yeah, projectiles yeah. around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's easy to understand. Uh, what, no, I'm good. We're, we're going to have to wrap this up pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, so, uh, so after all of this, what was it you wanted to ask? <laughs> <laughs> well, you never got to ask no, no, question. No, that's fantastic. He this, sort of this, anticipated this, that would yeah, happen. I, actually. I, I, I'm actually pretty excited that this worked out the way it did. And in fact, we're going to have to do this again some other time um, so that we can actually do the interview that was intended. <laughs> <laughs> that's but, cool. But I have we, no problem. What we ended up with, I am perfectly excited about. Yeah. And well, I hope the that, audio but, worked out with all uh, the sound. You know, but it there, looks like it's good. It, but Okay, so for the sake of argument, um, Let's just say um, who we are, and so we, oh. people can get sort of like a like a, a posthumous introduction. Right. Let's start with so. Adam. Okay. Uh, I feel like I was kind of the tertiary member of this conversation. <laughs> My name is Adam Chandler. I am a uh, 3D environment artist uh, at Fun Bits Interactive in Seattle. Uh, and Adam, you have never been tertiary in your life. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, am John Gard I am Jonathan Gardner, the host of Games, Games, Games. Uh, my name is Brant Andrist, and I'm a concept artist at Wargaming Seattle, and I'm also an instructor at the Art Institute of Seattle. And my name is BJ Becker, I'm a retired art professor. And I taught these guys. Yeah. Well, you're not so retired. I learned a lot tonight. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We you, got school. You're, you're retired only in that you have now decided how much you want to work. Yes. Well, I'll tell you, tell you an interesting thing, Jonathan, because this question was asked me before earlier. Because, of course, one thing that people listening to this because it's a podcast can't see is the fact that I'm wearing a dog, dog collar. <laughs> and a lady asked me before, you have a dog collar. Are, are you a minister? And the answer is yes. And I said, for some 20-odd years, I was a college professor. I was an art professor. And students would come to me in my office to discuss art problems. And we'd begin maybe by talking about perspective. And we'd end up discussing their perspective on life and how much college cost and what they were going to do when they left. And they'd come in and they'd want to discuss color theory. And we'd end up discussing, how am I going to survive the fact that my father's dying of cancer? That was an actual question I was asked by a student. And you know what my answer was? Keep drawing. Now there's a whole story involved in that. I'm sure. Maybe he for next used, time. Right? He used his sketchbook as the anchor that he held himself to the world with. Because art will do that. Right? And then you'd have somebody come in because they wanted to talk about the difficulties they were having with their boyfriend. And we'd end up talking about color theory. Because it works both directions. Now, in the United Kingdom, if you're a college professor or a tutor or one of these things, you have a duty which is known as pastoral care. Your students will come and talk to you, and you do your best to help them be successful students. If that means getting on with their roommates or dealing with a de death or whatever, that's what you do, right? And I taught art, and I did pastoral care, and then I retired as an art teacher. And the last packet of student reviews I got. Somebody wrote in there, Becker's really quite good, but he gets a bit preachy sometimes. <laughs> and I read this and I said, there's a reason for that, Sunday, yeah. Jim. Because this is, art is my life. It's what makes sense to me. It is how I understand our world. It's what it is that we do. Right? And then somebody wanted me to perform a wedding for them, so I got ordained, and then I realized something. I've been an art minister all my life. <laughs> Preaching the good word. Yes. Preaching the good word. B.J. Yeah. Becker, the bishop of the First Church of Art. <laughs> hardly. Protestant. Hardly, hardly, hardly that. More Crayola. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank God it's not Rose Art. Nobody. Uh, no, nobody. So... So, yeah, that's what I do. And actually, it's, it's really funny, I mean, coming out to see you guys. Uh, there's a lot of students, former students, and, and, and other people that I've met since in, in various ways, uh, actors and musicians and so forth. 
and you know we sit around and we talk around stuff we talk about stuff and it's still teaching in a manner of speak you know and and one of the reasons I, I, I really love this is talking to you guys is we've got we got all the fundamental stuff because we've done that already right? yeah. you know? yeah. and and I, yeah, I love the fact that we can joke about the modified Bloom's taxonomy of Bloom. <laughs> yeah. uh, because, Shared experience. Yeah. Something that doesn't even show up on a, on a Google search. No. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot Google this, people. <laughs> yet. It, yet. <laughs> oh, give John time. It'll be out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, I'd like to thank all of you for coming. Yeah, absolutely. Let me know when the next one is, and I'll be there. Yeah. Oh, John, it's been great fun. I really enjoyed it very much. I look forward to our next one. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for listening to the conversation. If you like this, please consider subscribing to Games, Games, Games. Also, if there's a person or topic you'd like to see covered in the conversation, Shoot me a tweet or leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.